Hello guys, Winston here. Let's talk Fusion 360. It's been requested for quite some time now, and I think I'm finally knowledgeable enough to address this subject. But I've been known to be wrong before, so if I miss something important, let me know in the comments section and I'll try to address it there. Since I know you guys come from all different levels of experience, let me start with a quick overview. What is Fusion 360? Fusion 360 is a 3D modeling, simulation, and CAM program that draws from Autodesk's history of making industrial-grade software, but takes a fundamentally different approach to delivering these capabilities. If you are trained in programs like SolidWorks or Inventor or Creo, Fusion 360 might appear to be a bit watered down at first. If you've been scraping along with SketchUp or even just Carbide Create, Fusion 360 might feel like five intimidating leaps forward. Regardless of what background you come from though, Fusion 360 is an undeniably capable program that's able to handle 99% of most people's needs. However, with great power comes a great learning curve. It's probably not an issue for a practicing mechanical engineer, but not everyone comes from a CAD-heavy background. So to help ease you guys into it, I'm going to go from start to finish on a really simple project to show you that Fusion 360 can actually be quite approachable. So what's the project you ask? Well, some of you might know that I'm an amateur car enthusiast, and I have a Forester XT that I've been slowly upgrading. I like to think of it as a fat WRX, and to further my delusion and enhance my amusement, I wanted to stick an STI badge on the front of its grill. STI is the performance division of Subaru for those of you who aren't hardcore rally fans. The problem with this badge that I picked up on eBay is that it's designed for a thinner grill. It can't be attached to my car as is, so I needed a clip that would snap onto my chunkier hexagonal grill. After measuring the profile of the Forester's plastic honeycomb snout, I opened up Fusion 360 to sketch out a design. To do this, you select Create Sketch, and then a plane or a face to draw on. Since this is a blank canvas, I'll draw on one of the default datum planes. I needed a J-shaped clip, so I used the line tool to draw out this profile. I made sure to keep my faces parallel when sketching. Using the dimension tool, I defined relationships between vertices based on my earlier measurements. Then I finished my sketch. Once you have a closed 2D profile defined, you can bring it into 3D by using the extrusion tool. Select the profile and either drag it into existence or specify the exact thickness you want. In my case, I'd be cutting this clip from a half inch sheet of high density polyethylene, so I typed in 0.5 inches. This is basically all the geometry you need to start making a CNC program. That you do by going into the CAM tab all the way on the left. Before you can define any cuts, you need to specify the details of your stock material. If, for example, I wanted to cut my half-inch thick clip from a sheet of 3 quarter inch HDPE, Fusion 360 would need to know that it has to cut through an extra quarter inch of material. The setup window is where you put in this information. In my case, the height of the model was perfect, so I didn't add any stock to the top or bottom. Also, if you model your part in the wrong coordinate system for milling, the setup phase is where you can fix this. Here, I set my z-axis perpendicular to the face of my clip, and the origin to the center of the bounding box. I selected a 2D contour cut from the list of operations, and highlighted the bottom profile. This not only tells Fusion 360 what shape to follow, but also what depth it should cut to. To cut out my piece, I'd be using an eighth inch end mill. This is my smallest cutter that still has enough reach to go all the way through my stock. I plugged in some middle of the road feed rates for it. Going back to the second window where I'd selected the cut profile, I knew that I would need work holding tabs to keep this piece in place. There just wasn't enough surface area to count on adhesive work holding. Plus, the thin walls were a massive liability. If they deflected at all, they could be snagged by the end mill ruining the piece. So I put in some work holding tabs. I opted to keep them tall and thin for better support and easier cleanup. The next tab is where you can define things like retract height or stock zero. The only one I'm going to touch here is the bottom height. I want to overcut my clip by a couple thousandths to guarantee that I cut all the way through my HDPE, so I'll set my operations bottom height to 0.1 millimeters below the model's floor. The next tab has a bunch of powerful but mostly overkill options that I'm going to ignore, save for the multiple depths checkbox. This lets you set a maximum step down so you don't try and cut the whole piece in one go. I went with a conservative depth of cut here to minimize stress on the clip. The last tab is more stuff that's overkill for our purposes, but you should read through what each option does. A willingness to explore will serve you well in Fusion 360. 95% of the things you'll want to do with this program are just a few clicks away. It's all about knowing where to look.
After you've simulated your 2D cut, you can export G-code by selecting Post Process either in the ribbon up top or by right-clicking on the setup or specific operation. The latter is what I did with my drone ship coasters so I could export groups of operations that use the same size end mill. Make sure your post configuration is set to Carbide 3D, pick where you want your files to be exported, and post it. You can double check that everything is in order by running the resulting G-code through another visualizer, but I just went straight to my shape Oka. I held down my stock with double-sided tape at two points for stability, turned on my router to a medium-low speed, and hit run. I managed to get a successful cut on the first try, but upon testing it on my Forester, I found that it was too loose, so I went back into Fusion 360, shrank some key dimensions, regenerated my toolpath, and posted a fresh G-code file. This was better, but still a little too loose, so I made yet another tweak to my clip model. I also thinned out my work holding tabs a bit more because I found that I could then use a knife to liberate and clean up my piece. This third version sat snugly on my car, though it could still slide laterally a bit. I'd fix that later with a small piece of double-sided tape inside my clip. To the front of my clip, I glued on my STI badge. I had to rough up the surfaces pretty well because HDPE is notoriously difficult to bond to. I only used it because it was the thickest plastic I had on hand. Once everything had cured, I snapped my newly mounted badge onto my Forester and found that it was quite securely fastened. This was a fairly basic project, and I hope it gives you a good idea for the fundamentals of using Fusion 360. To learn more about how to use it, I highly recommend going straight to the source. Autodesk has some great videos to get you started. I also really like just listening to NYC CNC's videos as he talks through his mindset when approaching Fusion projects. That's all I have for this week. Hopefully I've convinced you that Fusion 360 isn't as intimidating or bizarre as it might initially appear. Thank you all very much for watching, and I'll be back in a few weeks with more content of a CNC-related manner.